<laughs> and we are recording another All episode right. of the Healthy Brotherhood Experience. I am your host, JT Hale from the ATL, and my co host over here from the D, Detroit, the official mayor of Detroit, Lucia Boyd. <laughs> He really is the mayor of Detroit. And uh, we got a special guest this evening, Brother Orenthal Striggles down in Columbia, South Carolina. Certified right. running coach, BMR OG. Glad to have you on, Coach. Welcome to the Other Brotherhood Podcast, man. Have you checked out any of our podcasts before? Thank you. Glad to be here. No, actually, I have not. I'm behind the times. I didn't even know about the podcast until I was invited um, to be on. Okay. And you know, that's, that, that's my own fault. I've been just behind the times with a lot of things. So, yeah, I have some catching up to do. Lucire, we'll give him a pass. Yeah, we'll give him a pass today. He, he'll be all right. He'll be in the future episode <laughs> of the Healthy Brotherhood. Yes, hey, hey, Coach, oh, I met, I met you down in Tennessee, man. I, I was able to um, oh. have a conversation with you for a hot second in the um, – in the room where we were staying at. I don't know if you remember that. I remember. But I I, I really enjoyed talking to you, man, and to listen to you. And some people, you know, you, you hear about discipline, but some people you feel discipline, man. I, I literally felt your discipline just talking to you, man. Cause like some of the brothers, you know, do a little drink and little, you know, hanging out or whatever. But you like, bam, you streak, you got your your way of thinking. And I really, it, it was really a blessing to me to to hear the the way you are, man. It, and that's a you're a great example. You you really inspired me just Thank being you. down here, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny because uh yesterday made one full year of totally not drinking and I, that's that's something that I plan to stick with and this year come out come November actually will make 20 full years of being weed free so wow. marijuana free for 20 years yeah I never thought I would say that but glad to be able to that is amazing that's an accomplishment man to to be without for that duration of time man that is an accomplishment and going forward. You yeah. Know, that's pretty amazing, man. So so tell the brotherhood about yourself, man. Where you from, what you do, how you got hooked up with Black Man Ron. Will do. So Orange Thought Strickles, I'm from Girard, Georgia, which is rural Georgia, about 45 minutes south of Augusta. Okay. Um, I went to high school in Scriven County, Sylvania, Georgia. Um, and I did my undergraduate work and ran track and cross country at Benedict College here in Columbia, South Carolina. S I A C. Right, right. And that came after a few ups and downs to include flunking out of college the first time around at Georgia Southern and just trying to find my way um, after high school. Um, a little country boy who knew I could run long distance but didn't have a clue as to how to get better at it. And so that's why I still have this driving passion today to just simply help all that I can, experience what I love doing, as well as you know trying to do what I can to better myself. Wow. A lot of people don't know, people who know you may not know, uh, you are actually uh, CMO's running coach. Right, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I do coach CMO. Um, actually, the way I got hooked up with Black Men Run, if I can move to that, yeah. um, was I was coaching, of course, Shawana White, great running uh, female in the running community. And so through my coaching her, Philip um, King uh, inquired uh her about her running accomplishments and who her coach was and he told her about me um well she told him about me and then from there I got introduced to CMO and since then 
And it's probably been about seven years now that I've been, seven, eight years that I've been a member of Black Men Run. And about seven years I've been working with CMO and others in the running community, um, providing training plans and insight um, about running. That's pretty amazing, man. I might have to hit you up myself for some training. Oh yeah, please do, please do. Yeah. I, I tend to be a lazy runner, so I gotta break some habits. Yeah, well, we have plans for that too. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and so more about myself. Um, I, I have a master's in, in rehabilitation counseling, and I work currently as a ride along um, counselor with the Columbia Police Department. And my job entails, of course, mental health counseling, but also assessing those who might be in a mental health crisis to help them from being on the street or if that crisis happens at home, helping them into a clinical setting or, and or a hospital to get the help they might need. That's pretty cool. Um, we have two episodes devoted to mental health, one with uh, Knoxville Captain Philip Tucker. I met him. I met yeah, him in Tennessee. He was in Knoxville. And right. uh, Denver, one of Denver's vice captains, Dondre Harris. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did part one and a part two. And mm -hmm. the uh, podcast that we just posted, uh, we have George Morse from Philly and on Yankee Game from the Bay Area. We're talking about active shooter situations and things you can do to potentially uh, survive. So we touch on a variety of topics. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, everything from A to Z, mind, body, all of that. Um, Good. Yeah, man. So you, you, you touched on two very, very things we were really have um, just finished talking about. And it will be an ongoing conversation with the mental health specifically. Um, mm -hmm. That's great, man. So you ran track at Benedict? I did, yes. Did? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you run at Georgia Southern too? I did not get a chance to run at Georgia Southern. And the, I ended up at Georgia Southern not even knowing I needed to take an SAT to go to school. This is how ignorant I was and how ill-advised Ill and ill-informed I was coming out of high school. I had decent grades. I was always the, the number one athlete at my high school, Spriven County High. I graduated in 1994, but again, did not know I needed to even take an SAT to enter into college. Didn't have the best, I guess you could say, academic advisement. My parents didn't know, mm -hmm. um, can't blame them. And so by the time I, I was recruited by Georgia Southern, but never understood why I never got any offers. And so now that I understand, and now that I understand how things go in the operations of collegiate sports, I, I do now help athletes whenever I can, you know, with helping them, you know, enter into school. Mm -hmm. So I ran track at Benedict uh, for three seasons and three seasons of cross country. And and in, and during in those three seasons, um, I. We lost your audio. Yeah, hit your mute button again or unmute. Froze up. I think it froze up. There it goes. I'll, I'll edit that. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, so let me start over. <laughs> So again, not knowing that I had to take an SAT to even enter, enter college, I was able to now know the ins and outs. And um, I, I ran three seasons, actually two seasons of track and field, uh, three seasons of cross country at Benedict. And I graduated in 2003. All right, well, look at you, bro. Right. Pretty awesome. And so, Prior to graduating, um, I was promised the position of head cross country and track coach. But unfortunately, I had that problem. I couldn't put the weed down. I put it down, but then over the summer, I got around the wrong crowd and I indulged again. And so just prior to graduating, not even weeks after the cross country championships, 
um, the SIC championships um, that I uh, I was runner up to uh, Bernard Lagat's cousin, and who coincidentally was the only person in the conference to beat me. But long story short, I was I was uh, asked to take a drug test, and I did. I could have ran from it because I'm thinking, hey, I'm about to graduate in a couple of weeks. I can just run from it. But then I thought to myself, you know what? If I run from this, I may never face this thing that I need to get over because I can't take this smoking weed into my professional life. I really want to be a coach and I know it's going to hurt, but I'm going to do it anyway. I took the test, failed, of course, and was denied that opportunity to become head cross country and track coach at my alma mater, Benedict. And that hurt. Yeah. When I tell you it hurt, I have never felt that kind of pain before. That was like, it was worse than losing my best friend. Wow. I couldn't, for, and for years, I couldn't go to a track meet. For a few years anyway, I could not go to a track meet without crying because I knew I should have been out there helping some young man or some young woman be better at track and field. And it, it, it was just a shame that I could not, you know, do what I love doing. And so it was through encouragement of, of some folks that I know that told me, hey, well, if they won't let you coach, start your own team. And so I did. Mm -hmm. And so I started coaching little by little. And here it is, you know, a few years later, I'm now the national run coach for Black Men Run. Look at that. Yeah. See how God works. Exactly. Yeah. So Something better and bigger for you. Right. Hey, hey, coach. Oh. Mm -hmm. it, it's a reason for you know that that's that's really an awesome um testimony that you have because there's a lot of guys you know in the same predicament man and you you decided to face it head on man i mean not that's a lot that takes a lot of courage to do what you did man i mean right. wow that that most people would hide from it or you know try to ditch and dies but you you went at that thing head on let the chips fall where they may right. that, was, that was powerful man and 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 you know what all the all the future people that you come across that hear this it's gonna inspire them man you that you, that's needed people like you are needed that's going through something we need people like you that have gone through the the forest and the woods and came out on the other side and right. be able to tell people man you know what you're not at where you want to be right now but your right. best days are ahead of you right right and so what i decided to do i decided to take all that pain that i was feeling from the loss of not being able to coach and i poured it into myself and in 2004 i became the um, USA Track and Field South Carolina Long Distance Runner of the Year. Because at that point, I did, I was fortunate to be able to have a great coach in Selwyn Blake, who runs the uh, Strictly Running Shoe Store here in Columbia. Um, gave This brother gave me all of his knowledge and just poured so much time and effort into me. And, and in return, I was able to produce some pretty decent times. And it's just the same that I want to give to others. And, and, and you're right. My best days are and were at that time still ahead. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I do hope that, you know, my, maybe my story can touch someone to help them understand that you can let anything go if it's not good for you and That's move right. forward. Truly, truly. Uh, and if anyone has ever seen you run, man. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> man, I had the blessing of seeing you start that's about it man yeah. <laughs> man when we got back to the when we won all them medals over there at the vacation races and we got back oh, you, you was gone man you had already packed your bags and was gone man we was like <laughs> man. but we yeah I, I i wish i could have hung around but you yeah. know being a father of five you know someone might someone is always going to need me you know and they're still Younger than my oldest is 27. My youngest, he's with me now. He's 15. And uh, I'll tell you more about him because he's uh, starting out um, and becoming a, a fairly good runner himself. But um, I, I really wished I could have hung around. But these events where I'm able to hang out with brothers, it's, it's a lot of fun. And that was one of my favorite, most favorite events. That was a very fun time for me. 
you know, uh, mm -hmm. in Tennessee, in the Smoky Mountains. Yeah, Man, you know, awesome. we enjoyed it. For, for all those that don't know, he set the record for that particular course. It's a whole nother record. I, I don't know who it's going to take a minute for somebody to break that record on that course mm -hmm. you set, man. Yeah. <laughs> you you left some flames and some dust out there, bro. <laughs> I'm just always happy to represent. I'm always happy to represent. But I, and I don't take it for granted. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really, really cherish every day just being able to get up and do this. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I hope that you know, others could just understand that you may not run your best race on any particular day, but let it go. Let it go and just be grateful to be able to do it because, you know, mm -hmm. we're not always going to win them in, in any avenue in life. We're not always going to win, but if we can always just try our best, that's what we can all do. That's and it. so that's what I hope to help others do. Just do your best. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. Inspiration and motivation there. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, shoot. And so your son, 15, he's running too. Yes, he's sort of my protege. His name is Orrin, um, after me, Orrin Thal. Okay. Okay. And um, Orrin's 15. He, he's actually going into the ninth grade. And so he has four good years ahead of him, we hope. Um, and earlier this year, he was able to run 17.54 for 5K. And so we are, we're, we're just taking it dead one day at a time. He's <laughs> running. He listens re well. Re rewind, brother. <laughs> what was that time on that 5K? The 17.54. Man, in the yeah. ninth, he's not even in the ninth grade yet. Right, right, right. But he's a student of the game. When I tell you he's a student of the game, he really, really studies. Every day he's looking up what the best do and how they do it. So I, I re I'm really, really fortunate in that way because he, he, remind, he reminds me a lot of myself in that I know that if I had the access to that information, it's, it's what I would have been doing. And so I'm, I'm so happy to be able to give, you know, in, in that regard, you know, pass that along to him and, you know, hopefully he'll be able to make the best of it with his future. And if not, then, Hey, it was, it was fun while, while it's lasting at this point. No doubt. Next generation, you, your son, Mark Moreau, his son. Yeah. And yeah. This next generation, they're going to, they're going to be right. a, a, a machine. Right. To be, yeah. Right. 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 Son. Mm -hmm. Sonny Sonny son, Sonny Green, his, his yep. son, Michael. Yeah. Sonny Green. Lamar Burke, his son, Aaron, uh, Arrington. These these young men, man, they are they are no joke. They are a right. force to be reckoned with, and it's right. cool to see them somewhat growing up in the brotherhood. I know, love, yeah, yeah, among, among, amongst the big brothers. It's, it's really cool to see something great to be. I think it's great for them to be a part of uh, something. I wish we had when we were kids. You yeah, know? but. Um, Hey, it is what it is. So that brings us to not only are you a runner, Lou Sire, he's also an author. Yes, sir. And he's written a book titled The I in Running or What Running Drove Me To. Interesting yeah. title. Tell yeah. us about that, Ornithal. Well, I decided to go with the title The I in Running because Running, while it's very much so a team sport in a lot of ways, it's full of solitude and individualism in its own way. And so I would say running for me is how I found myself. Running saved me, if you will, from my bad habits at one point, because if I, if I had continued to go down this path, who knows? You know, I'm not immune to getting sick or becoming a drug addict or an alcoholic. I don't want to see that. I didn't want to see that for myself. And it's ironic that when I start, when I decided to stop drinking completely, my dad's health failed drastically. And I know that it was because of his drinking. And he just passed away in this past uh, January. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, and, and so I could see the decline and I had, told him a couple of years earlier, hey, dad, you might want to slow down. You're drinking 
the liquor like Kool-Aid. I mean, literally drinking it like Kool-Aid. And I saw I saw myself in him, you know, because it's it's crazy, you know. My, my dad and I are born on the same day. Um, he was an outstanding athlete, um, and to see this strong man decline and become weak and you know feeble, you know, it just made me be more grateful about life, you know, and and where I'm headed as far as I can control it. And so that's why I decided one day in Florida, hey, that, that's it. I, I'm just done. I don't need it. It's not benefiting me. Um, my children, in particular, my youngest son, he's the only one left in high school now, needs more of my time and attention. And I would love to still be running just as fast as he is, at least until, you know, if I can hold out until he's in maybe the 10th grade. If I can do that, you know, that'll that'll be nice. But I just want to just be around and be my best self. Absolutely. My my son was born on my birthday also. That's we got something in common. Right? Wow. What a coincidence. Nice. Man. Yeah. Man, and yes. my son, my son is a junior. <laughs> Lucia <Lusire> Jr. <laughs> nice. That's pretty amazing for your son to be born on your birthday. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a good birthday gift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really Orin, my son was, Orin was very close to my birthday. I'm the 24th of December. He, he was born on the 27th of December. So, yeah. so okay. many, so many uh, coincidences and, you know, things we have in common. Wow. That's destiny right there. <laughs> it, is. it is. So, I have a go ahead, Lou. I, when, what inspired you? to say, hey, let's, let me go ahead and put this down and write this book for other people to be able to see my story. Well, um, I had some inspiration from a, a, a guy who runs the Greenville Running Company, he and his brother. I went by one store that his brother owned in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, and Dave said to me, hey, OJ, which is what they would call me sometimes because OJ Simpson and I have the same first name. Hey, OJ, why don't you write a book? You've been running all these races. You're a serial racer. You race every single weekend. Um, why don't you tell us about it and how you stay healthy? I go over to Jeff's store, not even 20 minutes later, Jeff said the exact same thing. And I said right then, hey, you know what? I'll do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll write one. And so I realized after about two years went by why I didn't do it. And it was because well, I don't like to write. And so at that point, so, uh, someone encouraged me to get a ghostwriter, which is what I did. And George, Joyce Hodges Height is a retired English teacher in Georgia who lived and lives not far from where I'm from. And um she happily agreed to um, help me out with, with writing the book. You know, it's a very quick read, just a little bit about my life um, and, you know, the ups and downs and, and how I'm able to stay, I would say, you know, on top of my game and, and fit and stay within it, you know, the, the running. And um, that's how it ac actually came to be. Uh, what, what, for our listening audience, Explain what a ghostwriter is. A lot of people don't know what a ghostwriter is. So a ghostwriter is someone who writes the book for you. Um, that's pretty much simply it. You tell them what you want in the book. They formulate the words and put it into story form mm -hmm. um, or, or autobiographical form as you would like it. And so here it is. Um, she was able to do that for me. And I, I very much so appreciate that. Right now, she's at the Nationals. She is 86 years old, and she's wow. still running herself. So she's a lot of inspiration for me. Oh, she's a runner, too? She is a runner. Wow. 80-something. Right. That's awesome. Right, right. Does, does she have a book? She does have a book. Um, her late husband and herself wrote a book uh, called We're Going the Wrong Way Again, Jim. I think that's the name of it. But interestingly, when I met uh, her and her husband in high school, they were coaching a young man, maybe who lived about 20 minutes away from where I'm from in, an, in another high school. And I started out beating this guy, but it didn't end up that way because he had them. 
or her in particular to coach to coach him. And I didn't know this until years later after I graduated, how much she helped him with his running. But turns out she helped him a whole lot. He was able to go on to win a state championship and run awesome times. Um, and I didn't have that. I didn't, I never had coaching until after I had arrived at Benedict. And the coaching at Benedict um, wasn't the best, but again, as I was saying, I was able to find someone in the community. And so, uh, who helped me out quite a bit. Yeah. But um, yes, Joyce is my ghostwriter and she, she's a, an awesome person, I would say. That's cool. So it's really like it's a joint effort with the ghostwriter. You you really both are writing book. I think some people have the misconception that, well, then you're not really the author of the book. Yeah, yes, you are, because right. you are giving them the information. Right. Yeah, right. It's just kind of right. fitting right. it into an outline. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I gave her all the information. Some of it I would send her. And, and type it out myself, but you know, I, I wanted to simply not have to do too much. Honestly, in terms of the writing it itself, I was feeling a bit drained. You know, I'm running a whole lot, I'm working, I just have a lot going on. So I didn't want it to feel like a task. You know, I wanted it to be fun, laid back, right. and I didn't want it to feel like a chore. So that's why I ended up having a ghostwriter and she was great. Man, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so again, uh, guys, the book is called The Eye in Running or What Running Drove Me To. Right. And it is available on Amazon, just like everything else. Um, <laughs> Coach Orenthal Striggles is the author. Yes. Uh, I, and I, I, I took a little excerpt from it. You really started running around six years old. I did, yeah, yeah. True story. Uh, one day my brother lied on me and said I did something because we love to see each other get whippings. A whipping. <laughs> in the yeah, because, look, grandma would make you dance. And so when grandma get to beat you, you're going to move. And so he ran, he runs outside and he, he, he says, she, he did it, grandma. There he is. Let me go get him. And so he proceeded, they proceeded to start running after me to try and catch me to give me this whooping. And so I realized while running from my brother, hey, I'm tired, but I'm not that tired. But he's wore out. And I just realized, hey, I, I can run a long time pretty fast. And so there it was. My mind was set. I knew that I could run a long time fast. And so going through school, I just couldn't wait until I can get on a track team. And so in the eighth grade, I was finally able to do that. Um, at Central Middle School in Sylvania. My coach recognized me on the soccer field, running around all day. And from there, that's when, that's when my actual formative career started with track. Mm -hmm. I also wrestled in high school and was pretty decent. And um, although we did not have a cross country team, I found a coach who was nice enough during my junior and senior year to take me to the region and state meet. Did they ever... Did they catch you? That's my next question. They did not catch me. My grandma <laughs> gave up after after a while of running after me, and she said, "Baby, you ran so much. I feel sorry for you. I'm not gonna beat you no more." Wow. And so yeah. Later on that night, she told my grandfather about how I was running, and you know, she seemed to be impressed by it, and so that made me feel good that she thought something of me running, and so. Over the years, you know, she gave me a lot of encouragement, you know, um, when she would find out about my running. And so everything, you know, just really, really fell in place, I would say. Who knew that grandma chasing you with a switch is also a training method? Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> and, and you know what? If more grandmothers would chase these children nowadays <laughs> with switches, we might have another no allows in the midst of us that don't even know it. You know, man. You never know, man. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Let me ask you this question, man. As a as a running coach, when you're training different people, mm -hmm. what is the most common thing that you find that you have to uh, correct people on in their in their training? I'm going to say communication, the, the, and the reason why I say that is because you can give someone the best plan, the best plan, 
mm -hmm. if you're not communicating when changes need to be made, something's going to fall through the cracks and you have to get to know your people. And, and, and I take responsibility for not uh, communicating and getting to know runners, you know, over the years, because a lot of people may, may get a plan. Um, and, and I know I'm kind of not answering directly the question because I know you're looking for a, a certain thing about running that someone might be doing wrong. But the reason I'm so high on communication is because you may get a good plan, but if you're only abiding by the plan and not with how that plan might disrupt life or how life might disrupt that plan, uh -huh. then you might find yourself being coached by the paper and not by real life events. Because when things happen, you've got to readjust. Your body get tired. The plan might say go out and run seven miles, but you only have three miles in you today. And so that's why you may need to get with someone who can guide you into that. Um, but in specific, though, I would say a lot of times just doing too much too soon is often a problem and not enjoying the process. When you're not in, if you can learn to enjoy the process, the goal won't even matter. You may want to go to Boston. You may want to qualify for Boston, you know, but realistically, you may not have the capability of getting there and that's okay. But if, but if you ever get to the point of enjoying the process after a while, Boston won't even matter uh -huh. because it will, it'll only matter if you allow that thought to get into your head to matter, but it shouldn't. Because just being able to run, I mean, just, me just being able to run any race, you know, I, I don't need to go to the Olympic Games to feel like I made it or I accomplished anything. Just running a community road race or you know, anywhere for me, you know, is, 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 is it's my joy. Right. So your joy goes beyond getting the medals, the PRs, right. finishing right. things. It really is a true joy of running right right it is seeing how it far is. you can go mm -hmm. that's yeah. awesome that's amazing because i know we all have different goals but um it's always interesting when you talk to someone who's a running coach um someone who's certified someone who's won awards uh and find find that finding out what makes them tick what's really important to them in this entire uh running thing if you will so right yeah well, running running is hard um and so is accomplishing anything that's worthwhile it could be hard and to enjoy the process of getting through tough workouts and tough training day in day out you know mm -hmm. but also learning to enjoy the downtime and cherishing that you know not not looking at it as a chore, but looking at it as something that's designed to help me. Um, doing that helps a lot. And so if I had one piece of advice to give, it, to give anyone, I would simply say, set your mind to learning how to enjoy the process. Okay. And that can, that can go beyond running because if you can enjoy the process, if you could enjoy getting through college, getting through work, getting through whatever it is you might be doing, the outcome, you know, is going to be is going to be great. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Where are we, Lucia? Ah, uh, man, it's only like thirty-five. <laughs> oh, cool. We can shoot the breeze a little bit longer. Awesome. Uh, Coach Struggles, what, what, what's on your agenda for the rest of 23 as well as 2024? What's coming up for you? We're going on a book tour. Uh, what are we doing, man? <laughs> well, I, do, I do hope to have a book signing at our 10 year uh, meetup um, if I can squeeze it in. You know, I, I'm yeah, really looking forward to that 10 mile. I'm really looking forward to that because last year in Detroit, I had a ball. And I'm looking forward to more of, of uh, events like that. Um, 
In terms of some of the running, I do plan to run probably three marathons, four marathons actually, uh, before the end of the year to include uh, Quad Cities, Bismarck, Cape Cod, and Rocket City in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Uh, I'll be doing the 10 miler. Uh, I'll throw in some 5Ks, of course, a half, 15 miler, Charleston 15 miler. Um, so just to name a few, you know, those are some of the races that I will be participating in this year. Um, as far as book tour, I, I hope to have a book signing pretty soon in Columbia um, at the Hot Summer Nights uh, 5K race. Okay. So we'll, we'll see if I can get my shipment in soon enough. I'll make keep, that happen. Keep me posted on that, man. I, I, I may try and roll through this. So you're only three hours away. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good I'm event. To, uh, check that out. Bring we'll some that. Yeah, that's a day trip. Mm hmm. Yeah, and and the brotherhood here in Columbia is growing. You know, we uh, I think uh, every week the brothers meet. You know, at one of the local parks here. Mm -hmm. At the uh, one day a month, um, we'll have a uh, black men run, black girls run meet up. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, honestly, I haven't been able to make many of those runs because I'm always out of town, you know, racing. But mm -hmm. whenever I can, I try and make it. It's been very few and far between, but I'm very proud to see what those brothers are doing here in Columbia because mm -hmm. now you, you see them out and mm -hmm. the brand is being represented well here. That's awesome. That's what we like to see, man. We like to see these chapters growing, succeeding, yeah. being consistent, making their presence known. Mm -hmm. um, yeah may not make all of the meetups as you know life happens things are going on but when they're right. consistent you know you can always just show up and they're there right right yeah. right that's, that's, that's a good fit that is really a good feeling right right that's one of my coaching models be consistent be but also consistency is everything right but be consistent also at doing the right things mm -hmm. because well consistent, you know so that's it that's it for me that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I look forward to that, man. Um, How maybe. about you? You look like you would be an awesome ultra runner. Have you ever thought uh -oh. about Ooh. the, the only problem? Yeah, the problem with ultras is I love to run too much, right? I did JFK 50 mile. Okay. I up, yeah, I ended up running it in seven hours and some change. I anticipated running a lot faster because I, I felt like I was in great shape. I was in great shape. I was in really great shape to run that. But unfortunately, because I love to race, I ran a half marathon the week before. Was <laughs> not a good idea. And so I fell apart. I fell apart at, <laughs> in that race, but I finished it, you know, so... But yeah, I, I I think that I could be a decent uh, ultra runner, but okay. because I love to race so many events, you know, and 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 I said I might be one and done, but you know, I, I don't mind the challenge of doing another. I see a hundred miler in your future. I was, you know, it's crazy. I was thinking about it, and it's simply for the challenge. I mean, I, I would love to find the right one to run. But also have the discipline to not run, say, or try to race the week afterwards or the week before, more importantly. So if I come across the right one, I, I could see myself doing it. I, I could. Because I just love the challenge of it all. You know, I, I love this what we can push ourselves to do sometimes. 50 miler, 100 miler. Uh that's a you you taking that on? That's amazing to me. Lucire is taking on a hundred miler. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, all yeah. right. He's about to do a hundred mile. You've done fifty miles, right, Lou? No, no, I haven't done fifty. I've done the fifty-five k, fifty k. Um, I did the fifty-five k in South Africa to Ocean. Mm. Wow. Mm. But nice. what I I was told some somebody told me don't worry about doing a fifty miler. I'll get that one in my training for the hundred mile. Yeah, that's right. true. For sure. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Right. <laughs> you talk about endurance, endurance, endurance. Yeah. 
That's I have a bad environment here in Detroit, though. It, it, it's a bunch of ultra runners around me, so they kind of like drag you into it. <laughs> yeah. And I will be in Detroit as well. Um, so I, I think that might be after the meetup. Oh, but wow. It's, it's, in it's in October time. or November? Yeah, because I, 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 I'm in love with the free press races, you know. Oh, so you come to the free press. Oh, great. Right, right, right. That's the weekend so before the 10? Yes, yes. That'll yeah. be his warm up for the 10 miler. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be doing the mile, 5K, and half. Nice, nice. I, I, oh, man. Let, let us, we definitely, you got to come hang out with us then. I, I need, yeah. I'm going to let um Captain Rome and everybody know you're going to be here. We, we you're going to have a great time, man. Yeah. Yeah, so the mayor of Detroit will be looking for you. All right. Well, I, I, that means I don't have to worry about anything. The keys to the city is are in his hands already. You oh know? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm what I'm doing. I'm doing the half myself. I literally won the half marathon. I, I volunteered mm -hmm. for one of the races here in Detroit, and they did a um, what they call it pull pull a name out the hat, and they pulled mm -hmm. my name to win the half marathon for the Detroit Free Press. Nice. Wow. This will be your number what during the Free Press, Lucy? Woo, I've probably done the half probably whew, four or five times. I've done the full about six times here in Detroit. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Ten times across the bridge. Ten times. It's a, Detroit's, a, Detroit's a blessed city to be able to go over to Canada on your feet. That's mm -hmm. what I would tell you. It's the only time of year that you can literally go to Canada on your feet, except right now they're building a second bridge called the Gordy Howe Bridge, and they're going to have a, a walkway on the side where you'll be able to walk into Canada when you like to, which would be really wow. nice. Mm. Real nice. Nice. I got to come back and hit that Ambassador Bridge one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful sight. It is. I loved it. I was so excited to do that, man. So got to hit it at least once. One more time. Yeah. Mm. That tunnel. You get going under that hot tunnel. <laughs> hey, you know what? I didn't think the tunnel was really that hot. It was warm. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm like, that's all right. It ain't all that. No. Yeah, that's going to be. It help you to get used to it. Very easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, when you I, was, I was good in the tunnel. I was like, oh, this feels good. You know? When you come out of the tunnel, that's when it gets you. <laughs> yeah, that cold air hits you. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say I do better running in the cold than I do in the heat. I love I like running in the cold air. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Good, good. Good. You know, up up to 32 degrees. Below that, I ain't doing it. oh it's rough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I had we've done been there, done that, not doing it anymore. No, that's done it right. a few times, but yeah, it's got to be above freezing. Mm. Well, Co it. Coach O, we really appreciate appreciate you being on the show. We want to get we want to get the guys in the brotherhood spread the word, Thunderbird, about the book. We want when all get the book out this week. I'm I'm yeah. ordering the book myself on Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead in and read it, check it out. And um, thanks for being on the show today. It was a blessing to have you, man. Most Thank you for having me. Most definitely honored, sir. And for the brothers out there, you have just experienced the brotherhood. I love saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thank y'all. Uh, all right. Let me stop recording if I can find the thing. Are you sure you want to stop recording to about? Yeah.